What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and you already know what day it is. Say it with me in the comment section down below. It is Wednesday, my dudes. So you know what Wednesdays mean. You know that Treeb is going to be dropping another mock draft today. This is mock draft 4.0, and I believe we have one more Jags mock draft to do, and then one whole first round NFL mock draft to do before we hit the NFL draft, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to do me a huge favor and maybe help me reach my goal of a thousand subscribers by the time of the NFL draft, that's a huge, that's a huge ask. It's only three weeks away, but ladies and gentlemen, we are at 790 subscribers. We are so close to 1,000. If you could please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new videos on this channel six days a week with we with weekly series as well as like these mock drafts right along with Treeb, questions with Treeb, the Treeb and Jason podcast, Anything you want to listen to about the Jacksonville Jaguars is on this here YouTube channel. So make sure if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and help your boy reach his 1,000 subscriber goal by the end of the month. That's a huge ask, but you guys, I know you are capable of doing so. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's hop into this mock draft. I think this is the best mock draft that I've done so far. I'm going to warn you right here and now though, it is not the sexiest mock draft that I've done. But as far as filling team needs and filling positions of area that the Jags need improving, I think that this is the best mock draft I have done so far. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is my Jaguars 7th round mock draft 4.0. So ladies and gentlemen... Hit that intro. Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Round one, pick seven, offensive tackle, Jonah Williams out of Alabama. Now, I told you guys I try to consistently pick different players in the first rounds from former uh, mock drafts. But as we get closer and closer, uh, there's less of a reason to do that. And there's only one guy that I haven't picked in the first round uh, for the Jags that is pretty common. That's Ed Oliver. He's an interior defensive lineman. And yes, he'd be good coming off the bench or even starting for the Jags in 2019. But I just don't see that need being so pressing that the Jags go out and draft a defensive tackle in the first round. But this is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And from all the reports are pointing to the fact that we are going to be drafting a defensive player at 7. Especially with these free agency signings. The Jags front office is probably going to draft defense all fucking 7 rounds. So they're going to be like, we filled the need in free agency. We signed Chris Conley. We signed Ogabaye. You know, the best offensive tackle in the league. Hell yeah, let's go. Let's draft a defensive tackle at 7. I'm not about that. I think the Jags should address their defensive problems, and they do have the holes and the depth that they need to upgrade in the later rounds. Even as early as the second round, I think they should uh, do that. But in the first round, you need to go offense, and you need to go either offensive line, you need to go quarterback, or you need to go wide receiver, tight end as well. Those are all positions that are in the mix that you should be looking for in the first round. Now, the reason I went with Jonah Williams is because, in my opinion, he's the best offensive tackle in this year's draft. And from what the mocks have been showing me lately, it's that the first six teams are all going defense and the Giants are going to be selecting a quarterback or, you know, a wide receiver. So, no one's really in danger of taking Jonah Williams now. This guy was projected top three, top four pick at the beginning of the draft process, but now he's fallen down draft boards, and this is going to work in the Jags' favor. I originally was not okay with the Jags drafting a offensive lineman at the seventh overall pick, but if you got a guy like Jonah Williams from Alabama, no less, an Alabama offensive tackle, if you have that looking you right in the face at number seven, you have to, have to, pull the trigger on that one so you can have two Alabama boys holding it down at the left and right tackle because you know Jonah Williams is going to come in compete for that starting right tackle job and more than likely get it uh, from Cedric Ogabaye uh, <clears throat> to be the starting uh, right tackle probably for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019 and solidify a really really solid offensive line round two pick six wide receiver AJ Brown Ole Miss 
This guy has been my second round pick for, I, I think, almost all of them. I think every single mock draft I have done, I've had the Jaguars going out and getting A.J. Brown in the second round. Now, I'm going to be completely, completely heartbroken if he doesn't fall to the Jags in the second round or if the Jags don't make an effort to trade up for him. Because there's a lot of people saying a lot of things about these wide receivers really discussing who the best wide receiver is in this year's draft class. I make a case for A.J. Brown. I think A.J. Brown is the best wide receiver in the 2019 draft class, and you can fight me about that all you want. This guy's explosive. He has good feet. There's not really a flaw to this guy's game. He's just not the size of D.K. Metcalf, and, you know, I keep on saying that. Nothing I say now about A.J. Brown is going to do it justice. Just watch any of my other prior mock drafts. I have talked a lot about A.J. Brown and how much I really, really want him to be a part of this organization and to help the wide receiver room grow and to develop a really, really solid wide receiver core as well and maybe a true 50-50 guy, maybe a true number one guy in A.J. Brown. So if he is sitting there in the second round, the Jaguars better select him because this will be the steal of the draft because you just drafted a number one wide receiver. I promise, promise, promise you A.J. Brown is going to be the man to go off. Round three, pick five, Elkton Jenkins, center, Mississippi State. Let's just address some depth on the offensive line, something that the Jags have done well in free agency and this whole offseason thus far is address depth at the offensive line. they got to make sure that they have solid pieces all over the board so when a starter goes down, we will have a reliable backup. That's kind of something that bit us in the ass last year, and I think that's something that the Jags are really taking seriously this year. They've been signing a lot of backup guys that did show promise and potential to new contracts like Josh Wells. Though he wasn't terrific, he did show a little bit of potential when he came in and filled in that role. Tyler Shatley, who's been a really good Swiss Army knife for a lot of years, and you know, he could play the center and the guard position. But if we draft El- Elton Jenkins in the third round, that's going to be a true center backup. So, uh, Shatley can really focus on the guard position and really coming in if you know Norwell goes down, or I guess AJ can. Yeah, AJ can, I think, is still our starting guard. Lord help us there. But you know, drafting Elton Jenkins right there in the uh, third round is going to add a lot of depth to this offensive line and to the center position. Because Brandon Linder, though he is probably the best offensive lineman we have, he has gotten injured quite a bit. So grooming this guy along and making sure that he's ready, I think, is a solid move by the Jags. And he's one of the best centers in this draft. I think he's like the third, fourth, fifth best center in the draft or something like that like he is one of the best players at his position so snagging him up in the third round will be a steal and it's going to be really good to address the depth on the offensive line even more in the draft round three pick 34 tight end Dawson Knox Mississippi Ole Miss Ladies and gentlemen, y'all can calm down in the comment section down below. I already know what you guys were thinking after the first two rounds in my third round pick that I selected first. That, oh, Trey, you didn't take a tight end. What the hell are you doing? Don't worry. Dawson Knox is a reliable, solid pass-catching tight end that we can get later on in the rounds if we are trying to go offensive tackle and wide receiver. Uh, in the first two rounds, I think that Dawson Knox is a good guy to be looking at in the third round. A really good pass catching back at an old Miss, and he can block as well. Probably one of the better blocking tight ends in this year's draft, but he also has some solid hands. And I know what you're thinking, Treb. You always say you want a true receiving tight end. You know, it's just saying that to have a true receiving tight end doesn't necessarily mean they can't block at all. You know, they... This guy has tremendous blocking ability, and he can catch the ball as well. A true Mercedes Lewis. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the guy we're looking for. We're looking for a Mercedes Lewis that can fit our scheme. Because there's no tight end better fit for the Jaguar scheme than Mercedes Lewis. And I think Dawson Knox is the same way. He's a big guy that can block and catch the ball. He's tall. He has great. He has huge hands. Huge, huge, huge hands is Dawson Knox. And I think this would be a solid pickup in the third round if the Jags don't draft a tight end in the first round. Waiting until the third round to draft a guy like Dawson Knox is not a bad deal because I think Knox is like the third, fourth best tight end uh, in this draft, followed by Faint and uh, Hawkinson. So drafting him in the third round would be a steal, steal, steal. Irv Smith Jr. as well. I forgot to give him a shout out. But, you know, Dawson Knox under those three guys, I think he'll survive until the third round and the Jags are going to be able to select him and he's going to be our pass catching tight end next year. And it's going to be really, really exciting to see what this rookie can do for this Jaguars offense. Round four, pick seven, Christian Miller, edge rusher, Alabama. Anytime you can take a solid defensive player out of Alabama, 
you have to do it. They're almost guaranteed to pan out. You look at guys like Ronnie Harrison on the Jaguars. Anybody from Alabama that the Jags have really drafted has worked out, unless I'm missing anybody drastically, drastically wrong. Anybody the Jags have drafted out of Alabama, especially in recent history, has really panned out for the Jags, though. Like TJ Yeldon, he didn't last for the Jags. Uh, he didn't stay. He didn't sign a contract extension, whatever. But everybody that the Jags seem to draft really out of Alabama seems to work out. And Christian Miller is going to be the same thing, I think. He's going to be able to come in for Yannick Ngakwe or Calais Campbell. This is a must now. You know, I wasn't a guy really that was like, we don't really need an edge rusher in the draft. Like, we could wait and, you know, ride the wave. But we really do need somebody to come in for Calais and uh, Yannick Ngakwe. We got Dewan A. Smoot who is going to be subbing in for him uh, during the season as well. But, you know, he's kind of raw. He doesn't have a lot of playing time. So, you know, drafting another rookie to kind of come in and get better, fill the role, and be a guy that comes in, you know, for Yan or for Calais, uh, that's going to be huge. And Christian Miller, a defensive end out of Alabama, that's basically all you want, you know, looking at the school he's coming from. This guy has a high, high motor. There's just a, It's a really, really deep defensive class. So this guy's going to be slept on. He's going to be you know, dropping until about the fourth round. And I think that he's going to come out with a lot of a lot of pressure on him and a chip on his shoulder as well. You know, we drafted a pretty good edge rusher a couple years ago in the later rounds in Yannick and Gokwe. Hopefully this guy can kind of follow suit and Christian Miller could be the next Yannick and Gokwe while subbing in for Yannick and Gokwe. Round six, pick five, Miles Gaskin, running back out of Washington. You know, there's been two Jaguar running backs that have been signed this week, uh, Alfred Blue and Benny Cunningham. So, you know, I, I raised the question in those videos saying, I don't really know if the Jags are going to be targeting a running back. But, you know, in the 6th, 7th round, what's the hurt? You know, draft another guy that could come in for a training camp battle and really, really show you what's up. And I think that's what Miles Gaskin brings to the table. And I, I, again, have no idea how he is just ranked so low on everybody's rankings as far as running backs go. It's probably because this isn't a deep running backs class, so everybody's kind of looking over it. But Miles Gaskin, a 40-year, 1,000-yard running back. Like, this is a guy who is so solid. He was what the offense was run through in Washington. And the Jags need a running back like that if Fournette goes down. And Miles Gaskin can be that guy. He could be the guy that your offense runs through. Miles Gaskin, in my opinion, is the best running back in this year's draft class. At me if you want. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm stupid. But I'm telling you, wherever this guy goes... He is going to be successful, and he is going to make everybody pay for sleeping on him because he is one hell of a running back. He has all the intangibles to be an NFL star, to be an NFL star running back. And it, it, it sucks, you know, and it hurts me that, that Miles Gaskin is so low on everybody's big boards because this guy has tremendous, tremendous potential. And I've gone on about Miles Gaskin a lot in these videos because I have the Jags drafting him in the later rounds a lot in these videos. I even, during my live interactive mock draft, you know, I was talking to you guys, telling you how much I really love Miles Gaskin and how much I think that he would help this team and help, you know, the the whole running back room and to really bring out the competition. This is what you need. You need a guy like Miles Gaskin to come into training camp and push these other guys that you have on your squad. Like all of these running backs should not feel safe. And what you got to do is take a guy like Miles in the sixth round to make sure of that. To make sure these running backs know that their spot on the team is not solidified because you have this young up and coming running back, a rookie coming off the bench and being you know an elite running back to help out this squad and you know guys like Cunningham guys like Alfred Blue are going to look at that and be like man I might not even make the roster this Miles Gaskin kid is going off and that is a guy you need to bring in for training camp and that's what Miles Gaskin is going to give you and I realize now I've spent the longest out of anybody talking about a six round running back that I hope the Jaguars select but I really really hope to see this guy in black and teal but I wish him nothing but success wherever he goes even though he would whoop up on my cougs every single time that he played him. Round 7 pick 22 quarterback Easton Stick North Dakota State. Now, there's a lot of people nowadays that are like, Cody Kessler cannot be our backup. 
all this, all that, you know, that can't happen. And I agree with that, so you might not agree with me picking a quarterback in the seventh round. But I touched on this again in my last mock draft. We drafted Easton Stick in the seventh round, that one. This guy's an FCS quarterback that has a lot of talent. And, you know, he really shouldn't be as ranked as low as he is. But the reason is, is because he went to an FCS school, man. He didn't go to a big school. North Dakota State was home of Carson Wentz, you know. And obviously that guy was on another level when he was over there. So, you know, he have, he obviously increased his draft stock. But Easton Stick is a guy that I think could come in. You know, we could watch him in the preseason. Really see this young man develop into a pretty uh, solid, tremendous uh, quarterback, or at least a backup quarterback for the Jaguars to rely on. And I think that he has the potential to do that, to sit behind Nick Foles, and really if his name needs to be dialed up, it can be, and he can be successful. I don't know about winning us games right off the bat, but... You know, you can't really ask for that out of a 7th round rookie. But he definitely will be in the QB room with Cody Kessler, with Nick Foles. And, you know, we'll see where he's at on the depth chart if the Jaguars do draft him at either 2nd or 3rd. But the Jags are in search of a backup quarterback. And, you know, the 7th round getting Easton Stick might not be a bad option. And that was my Jaguars 7 round mock draft 4.0. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Treep Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Dibs are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.